everyone and welcome to the second part of our goal setting episode which is about goal setting for the new year and today we'll be discussing goal setting for business. If you watch our previous episode, it's about goal setting for yourself, for your personal development. And we discuss tips on how you plan the new year, how to set goals for yourself, and how to make those goals a reality. And today, it's more of a niche episode it's for Christian business owners or for those who want to glorify God with your business, use their businesses as an instrument so if you're a business owner planning to start a business or even if you are a manager a leader of a business you are leading a team i think this episode is for you especially if you want to manage a business in a way that will please god i hope this episode will inspire you and will help you plan your business goals and plan your strategies for the new year to help your business bring glory to god this coming year so when we started our business back in 2009 a photography business was not our first choice of business. If you watch my previous videos, you will know that our first choice was to open a restaurant and to open a home furnishing shop. However, our business partner ran away with the money, so we were in debt of more than $200,000. So it was a very frustrating time. It's a very depressing time. It was one of our lows of our life, me and my husband, when we started a business. And God bless us with photography and videography talents, which a side hustle that helped us pay that loan. So we really believe that this business is an opportunity for us to bring glory to God and to give thanks for His help and His mercy that has helped us pay the loan. And through this business, we actually saw how kind and how loving He is. And we want our business to be a tool, to be an instrument for us to give back to others and of course, for others to be inspired, for others to see how good he is and how faithful he is to us and that he deserves all this glory and all our thanksgiving. Running a business is not an easy journey, of course. There were still ups and downs. It's a journey that in every day, when, as we journey through our business, we see his provision, we see his kindness in and we see his faithfulness in every aspect of our business. Even during the 2020 pandemic, when most businesses have shut down and our business almost also closed down because of no projects for months and did not know where we will get the money to support our team. And we had to also downgrade everything, our lifestyle, our house. We moved from a three-bedroom to a two-bedroom and even the neighborhood that we lived in, we canceled all our kids' extracurricular activities, but we still saw God's faithfulness in that we survived the pandemic and now we're slowly growing God's grace. So how do we plan as a Christian business owner? How do you plan your business? How do you set your goals this coming new year with that in mind? If you want to really bring God the glory, if you want to turn your business into an instrument that will serve others and will inspire others how do you set your strategies and how do you make plans for that to make this happen seek god in all things like i said when you set goals for the new year especially if you want to set goals for yourself or for your business it's more about intentionality you create the time so like in our previous episode we enumerated the things that will help you achieve your goals these are called identity-based habits. But what if you're setting goals for your business? You have to figure out, again, the identity of your business. So for example, for me, I want the identity of our business to bring glory to God, not to ourselves. And that's actually one of our core values is faith. And how do you then make strategies? How do you then implement plans? And how do you make this possible? How do you bring this goal into fruition? So one of the things is intentionality, like setting time and making sure that this is followed. So as a business leader, you yourself should first make the change in yourself as a business leader. So for example, set the time for prayer and meditation every day and set about 15 minutes of your time. So this is what I do every morning. As soon as I wake up, I dedicate 10 to 15 minutes of my time praying and reading the scripture and seeking for discernment. And this is a non-negotiable for me. So maybe as a business owner, you should intentionally seek God and dedicate a time talking to God, opening your heart, studying His Word, and spending time in quietness and stillness. When you read the scripture, when you study God's Word, and when you ask for wisdom, you 
will see that God is going to reveal His plans and His desires for you and His will for you. So when you read the scripture, you will see that you can align your business values according to the scripture. So for example, integrity and honesty, that's in the scripture. And it's important for your business. And this is something that you can ask your team to implement is integrity and honesty. It's one of our core values in the business as well. It's about conducting your business with integrity, honesty, fairness. Be fair to your customers. Be transparent. Be honest in your business dealings. And this is something that as a Christian business owner, this should be a part of your rules so you have policies for this review your current policies review your current values having a policy for how you talk to angry customers how you deal with your clients and that you have to talk to them with respect even though sometimes it's going to be hard because like some clients are very irate or some are very unreasonable and some of them actually really use bad words but this should not deter you from showing your respect and talking to them with honesty and integrity. And even though I, some of you will be tempted to get more money out of a client, but you should be fair in all your business dealings as a Christian business owner. And this should be indicated in your policies and in your processes. When you align your business values with biblical views, you also then look at other aspects like servanthood. So servanthood, one of our core values is also under promise and over deliver. So Sometimes we get tempted to overpromise just to get the client's trust and to get that to close a deal. But it's very important for us to include servanthood in our dealings. When we say something, we should uh, over deliver. When you know that you cannot do something, be honest and be transparent. So, this is something that you can also include in your policies. Never say, that you're going to deliver in three days if you know that you will not be able to deliver in three days and be, being open and have a transparent communication with your clients. We now have leaders in our team and we want them to show that being a leader means serving others. It's not about being the boss or, or you should be looked up highly, but more of like you should be able to serve others. For me, you, respect is to be earned and People should follow you, not because you're the boss, but because you have shown and inspired people and you have shown true leadership by serving others. One of the things that you should also look at when you're reviewing your business in a Christian perspective or in using biblical views is your stewardship. So one of the things that we started doing since 2020 was making sure we have this aspect in the business, a CSR aspect or more of how do we give back to the community. So when we saw that how good God is to the business, that he keeps providing for us, giving us clients, that he has been faithful to us, we said it's time for us to give back to the community as a business. When we started the business, actually, we thought that when we provide jobs for others, that's already part of stewardship and that's already part of helping the community, but it's not actually enough. When you want to serve the community, you involve also your team. So when you involve your team, they also feel that they're part of an organization that exhibits that values and not only exhibits those values, but also includes them. Not because for you as a leader or the owner of the business, I don't actually consider myself as the owner of the business. Our business is actually still owned by God. I'm just a steward as well. God has asked me to look after this business and run this business and I should be faithful by running this business according to biblical values and according to scripture. Going back to what I was talking about, which is about stewardship. So make sure having a budget allocated for charities, outreach, so donations, making sure that you contribute back to the community should be something that is part of the overall plan for you this coming new year. So when you have included this, you will see how good your team will feel and how you're spreading positive vibes not only to others who you're helping but to the team as well when they see that this business is not only just to gain revenue it's not all about just the numbers but it's all about also helping the community and helping others another thing that 
as a Christian business owner, if you have acquired a business or if you are starting your own business, especially startups, if your budget is tight and if you are not reaching your targets or reaching your desired revenue, as a leader or as a business owner, as a steward of the business, you should always be fair to your teammates, fair to your employees by paying wages on time. You pay yourself last as a business owner, I know. I pay myself last during those hard times, not only during the pandemic, but there were times that business is slow, especially in the summer season, because business is slow for us during summer months because there's not a lot of events here in the Middle East. We're actually in Dubai. If you don't know that, you can check out our website. We are Our business is based in Dubai and majority of our business is based in Dubai. Even though we serve other countries, we do international projects. Like 90% of our business comes from the Middle East, which is Dubai and the nearby countries. So during the summer months when it's extremely hot and there's very rare events or very rare projects, even weddings. So those are the times that business is slow. But you know what? Even if you don't meet your targets, even if expenses are coming in, you should be fair by paying your team on time and paying yourself last. When you run a Christian business and want to lead in a biblical way or according to scripture, it should also be seen in how you manage your team and how you manage the schedule of the team. As a Christian leader who wants to manage a team with biblical principles or with integrity and according to your faith, one of the things to do is integrate your faith into business operations. What does this mean? It's like putting a time for prayer, for scripture reading. If you don't want it too much, especially if you have team members who are not Christians, we can all dedicate a time for prayer. Maybe as a business owner, you're having a difficult time and, and as a business owner, you should also be sensitive to your team members. You want to integrate faith in your workplace, but you don't want to rub it in. Like you don't want to push too much because actually sometimes when you push too much, you push your values and your faith to other people. They sometimes actually pull away. And that's something that we don't want to do. We want more of like inclusivity. We want everyone to feel comfortable with each other, we want them to feel comfortable expressing their faith. We want our team members to be comfortable being open and being honest. And this is how God wants us to be when it's actually easy to share each other's faith when you're modeling it, when you respect others, when you respect their faith. So one thing that we implement in our company is having daily huddles. The first huddle of the week, I try to be there. I try to attend the first huddle of the week or the second huddle of the week and have this called Faith at Work. So this is a time for us to read the scripture. It's a space for us to openly express our faith, express our emotions and be open and tell our struggles. We pray for each other's struggles. We pray for each other's challenges. And we are thankful for just for the blessings that we receive. So implementing this faith at work, starting the new year, we want to feel God's presence and guidance. And we ask for God's presence and guidance. People are more inspired when they see you walk the talk instead of just talking about the lessons that you learned in the Bible, talk about the Bible and talk about these things. But it's more important that they see you display this in your actions. As a business owner, I have a lot of network in my BNI network. I have my Entrepreneurial Organizations Accelerator network. And I have Female Fusion Network as well. And I have mentors and I seek guidance from business owners who have been there, done that. All those. One thing that I miss here in Dubai is a community of Christian business owners where you learn a Christian way of running the business. This is something that I have started this year is to have a small mastermind of Christian leaders that we want to just form this group. Praying for each other. It's more about praying for each other, guiding each other, and uh, reading the scripture together, and hold each other accountable in running the business in a biblical way. And if you're actually interested in joining, you are welcome. Please feel free to DM me. Please feel free to message me. And we'd love to have you on the group. So how do you actually implement all these things that I said? And how do you measure it? Like, how do you measure running a business biblical standards or according to the scripture? Assess yourself. 
So dedicating a uh, time for networking with Christian business owners, dedicating a time for this prayer time in the office, and dedicating a time for yourself to just meditate as a business leader. And having a track sheet. So I have a habit tracker that helps me keep on track and helps me keep, be consistent on the habits that I want to implement. Because like I said, it should be identity-based habits. So if you really want to your identity of your business to be biblical and if you want to really lead your team according to the scripture, according to God, giving God the glory, then you should set yourself KPIs, which is about like how much time, reviewing and asking your team members for feedback. And if you really want to be fair and walk the talk as well, make, have honest conversations with your team members and include questions that is about humility and compassion and respect in your assessment form. We have annual assessment forms that we ask our team members to fill it up. Remember that when you want to transform your business into an instrument that will give God the glory, it's not an instant thing. It's not something that happens overnight. It's a journey. Step by step, it happens gradually and developing oneself. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. Seeking God's guidance, sometimes you'll make mistakes you'll fail at some things. But it's not about failing and giving up. It's about trying again. And it's about progress. Like what James Clear said, be 1% better every day. It's dedication, consistent effort, and your willingness to be guided. Ask for wisdom. Actually, this is one thing that I'm always reminded is that when we ask God for wisdom, He will give it to us. James 1, 5, says that if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. So let this encourage you and let this guide you. I hope this episode today have inspired you. And if you're writing your goals for the new year, I know it's the usual smart goals. We have planned ours. We have set our financial goals and we have set our marketing strategies for the new year but you should not forget that your business is also an instrument that will give god the glory and make plans to implement this that this should be visible and that this should also bring results for your business if you like this episode please hit the like button below and do subscribe for more